Joining me in the studio now is Talk TV's Royal Editor, Sarah Hewson. You've been very busy. You really have been broadcasting about this ever since the shock announcement at 6pm yesterday evening. And I don't know about you, but it feels to me as if events are moving very fast indeed. So we only found out at 6 o'clock yesterday evening. And since then, a great deal has happened. Yes. So at 6 o'clock uh, yesterday evening, we got that statement from Buckingham Palace uh, revealing the news that the King has cancer and that he had already started treatment yesterday, receiving his first round of treatment as an outpatient. Uh, then we uh, understood that Prince Harry was leaving the United States and was flying back. He landed here. Uh, at lunchtime and then gone straight to see uh, his father at Clarence House at a meeting lasting less than an hour, probably around 45 minutes uh, between Harry and his father. Uh, and now the King is returning to Sandringham. Now he and the Queen were in Sandringham over the weekend. Uh, they were seen walking to church, everyone feeling reassured at seeing the King uh, smiling and, and carrying out his normal activities going to St Mary Magdalene Church. They are now returning there where the King will continue his recovery before his next round of treatment. I think some people might be surprised by this. They might think, you know, this is a king in his 70s. He's just had what they call a procedure, but it means an operation. He's had an operation in hospital. He's receiving treatment for cancer. He has a very comfortable and beautiful home in London at Clarence House, it used to be owned by the Queen Mother. It's meant to be, as befits a royal family, palatial, just gorgeous. And they might wonder why, at his age and at this stage, does he want to fly off or rush off back all the way to Sandringham, which is in Norfolk, isn't it? You, you it would is. think, you know, stay near, stay near where you're having the treatment, relax in your beautiful and palatial home in Clarence House, almost kind of be near where your doctors are so we all know where you are. Just, just, just rest for a minute, sit tight. Uh, he's not like you or I and he'd have to sit in traffic on the A12, though, uh, is he, Vanessa? No. So it'll be a short journey to Sandringham and ultimately, the King is a country man right. and to be surrounded by nature I think will be very reassuring for him at this time. It's also quite significant because it's February the 6th today. That was accession day for the late Queen. It was the day, 72 years ago, that her father, King George VI, died and she spent every single February the 6th at Sandringham House because it had been so important to her father. Oh, can you describe a little about Sandringham House? It seems to be almost the least well-known of the royal residences, doesn't it? We obviously know Buckingham Palace. We're very, very familiar with it's Windsor Castle. Balmoral, we know very well. But Sandringham... It's a private residence yes, we rather never get than to an know official much. palace. Uh, so it's, on, uh, it's in Norfolk, uh, the Sandringham estate. It is where the royal family traditionally spend every Christmas. Uh, there is the main Sandringham house. There's also Wood Farm, which is where Prince Philip effectively retired to and spent much of his retirement when he stepped back from uh, public life. It's a real favourite uh, of the royal family and uh, it is very close to where uh, William and Kate have their country residence and the hall as well uh, and if Kate is able to travel there for the half term period for part of her recuperation with the children it may be that they are also in Norfolk but I think ultimately uh, for the king it is somewhere where he can be in the countryside, uh, away from London, away from the office. He's going to carry on working. Mm -hmm. He'll still be receiving his red boxes, having the prime ministerial uh, audience, uh, for example. Um, but it, it sounds like that will be done uh, remotely uh, from there. Let's, let's just talk through what, ha what has happened so far with Prince Harry, because I think most of us, I mean, just ordinary people like us, would have imagined that Harry comes flying in very, very quickly and urgently to see his father. And so many people are delighted by this. Mm -hmm. They're so pleased and hope that this will bring the king a great deal of succor and, and, and you know, comfort and happiness. And we know that the king's been devastated and upset not to see his darling boy. So people thinking, well, this is such good news for the king that Harry's here so very quickly. He's responded so fast. But I think we might have thought that they'd sort of spend, you know, some some days together, that they would maybe, you know, Harry would go with them to Sandringham if they're in Sandringham, or they would have stayed at Clarence House and Harry would maybe have stayed there with them. 
And and you tell me what's happened as far as we know it so far, because it's not necessarily what, what I expected. It may not be what other people expected either. Well, we know that the King made a personal phone call to Prince Harry, as he did to Prince William and to his siblings, Anne, Andrew and, and Edward, to tell him and to break the news uh, to him. Um, that was in the past few days. We know that the King was informed last week about his diagnosis. So while Harry has acted quickly, I don't think it was a panic move to get on a plane uh, last night, but he has come over at the first opportunity. He's flown over, uh, seen his father. Um, a 45 minute meeting, yes, it, it sounds like uh, not very long, but it is their first face-to-face -face, uh, meeting since the coronation. Even then they had barely any time uh, together because the King was uh, somewhat preoccupied uh, with the coronation. Uh, and so I, I still think it is significant, although it is not a long time. And, and let's not forget there's been an awful lot uh, said uh, since uh, Prince Harry and Meghan left for California, the book, the Netflix series, etc. not least of all about Camilla, um, and I think there may, you know, that there are certain wounds on that side, but it is not the time to be thinking about that rift at the moment. No. Really, that's not the focus. The focus here is on a son coming back to visit his father, who's just had a, a really worrying uh, diagnosis. And, and we're told that, you know, he's wholly positive about it. We, we've heard the prime minister saying, you know, it's been caught early. And so that's positive news. But any son would want to be here Abs and absolutely. see their father. And yet we still can't help thinking, you know, he's come all the way and, you know, the king is having you know, treatment for cancer, fo directly following an operation. And the king and queen are heading to Sandringham, which, as you've said, is private and beautiful and restful and rustic and all the things that the royal family most esteems. Um, it's large, too you might have thought that a way of acclimatising them to one another again, when they haven't spent time together for so long, and as you quite rightly say, there's such excellent reason for them to be strained, estranged, tense. You know, you can't imagine it was an immediate, you know, just slotting back into cordiality, although it may have been. No, it may and have also been. I don't think this is the time for them to be having heart-to-hearts, really, about what's happened, because you're not going to want to put the king under any But you might have thought, strain. it's not like, you know, they live in an average semi, and where's Harry going to sleep you know how could he possibly muck in they'll all be squashed I mean you know he, you you might have thought he's come all the way couldn't he at least have spent a couple of days with them at Sandringham just you know to use the vernacular chilling out a bit you know maybe walking or maybe having breakfast or they will read the paper together I mean I know I'm just trying to impose Baby steps, ordinary life on them but yes I'm just, uh, yes I'm and just this thinking an you, you come family, all the it? way Imagine it's the equivalent of an ordinary family in this country driving, let's say, to, to visit a sick father in Edinburgh, let's say, and you drive up there. You know, you, you, it would be unlikely that you'd just say hello for 45 minutes and then go home and do something else. You'd think you'd want to kind of let a few days unfold and, you know... And we don't know, we don't know. what's going to happen and what's going to unfold over the course of the next few days, how long, in fact, Prince Harry is going to be over here mm. in the United Kingdom, whether there will be any opportunities for any further meetings with his father. We understand there are no plans at this stage for him to have any kind of meeting with his brother. I think Prince William's priorities at the moment uh, lie elsewhere and he's got uh, some pretty big burdens resting on his shoulders right now. He certainly has. He's got a wife who's reco recovering from a obviously arduous and very sort of um, difficult operation because she was in hospital for two weeks, which is virtually unheard of for members of the royal family, isn't it? Yes, uh, and so recovering from very major surgery um, at their Adelaide Cottage home uh, in Windsor. Uh, we know that William is returning to public duties tomorrow. He's going to be uh, carrying out an investiture at Windsor Castle. Then he's got a, a charity fundraising gala in the evening. And that very much deliberate that we're going to see him out and about to reassure the public that the business of monarchy uh, goes on in public as well as in private. Um, but, you know, he is going to have to step up at a particularly challenging time for him and his family. When Harry and Meghan married, I think Meghan herself may have thought, and certainly commentators both said and thought, she's marrying the second son. Obviously, we didn't use the term spare because it's so rude, but, you know, he's the spare, he said it himself. You know, their life will be a kind of subsidiary life of 
a bit of ribbon cutting, a bit of living in the countryside, you know, showing up for, for, for big events maybe and, and not much else really. But actually, if that is what we thought, we all got it terribly wrong because if Harry and Meghan were still part of the royal firm and were still here now, and if Harry was still a working royal... They'd be right on the front line. My gosh, they'd be on the front line. We'd be seeing them all the time. He'd be incredibly important to the royal family and not in the least bit spare. He'd be absolutely essential if he were here, wouldn't he? Yes, and, and Prince William, the youngest uh, working royal uh, at the moment, the only one uh, of that younger generation who is continuing to carry on uh, engagements. Of course, we're going to see more from Camilla. There are engagements for her. She's carrying on with a full diary of engagements. Uh, Princess Anne, Prince Edward, uh, the Duchess of Edinburgh as well. But you're entirely right. Had Prince Harry and Meghan still been working members of the royal family, they would have been out there front and centre. Yes. And um, I think that would have taken a lot of the pressure off other members of the family. But we are a long, long way from that now, aren't is we? It, is it absolutely, do you think, beyond the realms of possibility that Harry, who, as we know, has been part of the armed forces, you know, knows about knows about duty, was raised in the in the in the wake of the Queen's absolute devotion to duty, his grandmother. Is it beyond the realms of possibility that he might say? What can I do? Do you need me to step in? Can we help? I, I, we realise these are most unexpected circumstances, you know, when, when Kate isn't working and the King's being treated for cancer and, and can we help? Can we step in? Do you think there's any possibility he might do that? That conversation may well and that offer may well have been made, you know, what can I do? Mm. But I think it's hard to imagine Meghan and the children coming back here. We know how unhappy Meghan was during her time in the royal family and how unfairly she felt she was treated by the British press uh, as well. Um, also, I think Harry and Meghan become the story and it is already becoming the story and actually the story now is about the King yes. and his cancer and the treatment and his recovery uh, and I think they'll be reluctant to allow this to become another soap opera. We can just think if there were some way to kind of retrace steps and backtrack. People do change their minds. Circumstances change and people reappraise. You know, last week, we never dreamed in a million years Prince Harry would come and see his father, and he has. I mean, maybe there's a possibility that, that you know, that there could be there could be a rewriting of, of what, after all, doesn't have to remain the same forever just because it's happened. I think they will want to have continuity and a steady ship and that means the existing working members of the royal family will continue to do what they do. Uh, they want to make it clear that the King's going to carry on with his duties uh, behind the scenes. Prince William will of course fill in for him publicly where it is required. Other engagements will be uh, postponed. I don't think they want this to become more than it needs to be. And of course, we're in the early days. Mm. This is a, a long road ahead for the King uh, as well. Just had his first treatment. We don't know how that treatment is going to impact him, uh, how long that course of treatment is. There's a lot we don't know at this stage about where this is going to develop and how long it might be. But th there may be many conversations to be had over the course of the coming weeks and months. Sarah, thank you very much indeed.